I might not have a flashy intro today, but what I do have is a terrific deck and potentially tier one list out of the Scarlet and Violet base set coming in March. What's good YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a deck focused on Maridon EX. Before we jump into the list, I just want to say thanks for all the support over the past year. You guys have helped me hit every goal that I set out. Um, I couldn't do it without you, and I wanted to give a quick channel shout out to one of the many folks that have been kind enough to help me through this long and uh, treacherous journey. Uh, sealed only Pokemon, he's been terrific for thumbnail ideas, uh, for you know feedback, for suggestions, for somebody to just kind of bounce ideas off of and when things got a little tough. He's been awesome, they've been dabbling in Digimon, another game that I've been looking at. So. If you want to check their channel out and try another card game, I don't just play Pokemon. I do play Pokemon. I do play a little bit of Digimon once in a while. Uh, Magic for fun. And of course, I'd love to get back into Yu-Gi-Oh! Mostly just like casual stuff. But yeah, feel free to check their channel out. Drop a comment, sub the ch their channel, and uh, let me know what you'd like to see if you want to see anything beyond Pokemon on the channel. But with that said, we're going to jump right into the video. And we're going to take a look at first up, Maridon EX. So why is this quickly winning you over as one of your favorite decks out of the new set? Well, first of all, it's a lightning Pokemon. 220 hit points, one retreat cost, it gives up two prizes. I love lightning Pokemon, and the more I read off this card, the better it gets and the more excited I am for it. So Tandem Unit is an incredible ability that reads once during your turn, you can search for two basic lightning Pokemon out of your deck and place them onto your bench. That is phenomenal. You can grab basically any support Pokemon you need. We covered it in Ampharos EX as a two of, but as the star of the show, it helps you set up everything you could want and some, assuming it's lightning Pokemon. And of course, how do you cap off a terrific card? You give it a good attack. So for lightning, lightning, and colorless, 220 damage, but it can't attack the next turn. That's not a problem because in Pokemon you can play switching cards and reset that effect. So we can use it more than once should it survive. But we're trying to go fast and how do we do that? We take one of the fastest Pokemon in the video games and we play it as a 4 of. We got Regilek EV. So it's a V Pokemon. It has one retreat cost. It's mostly here to evolve up, but it has two notable attacks. So switching bolt, 30 damage and switch this Pokemon with one of your bench, very nice. I have used that, it's actually pretty good for picking off basics. And of course, lightning wall. So lightning double colorless, does 100 damage and then takes 100 less damage from your opponent's Pokemon the following turn. So that's not too bad. They are serviceable attacks, but the key reason we are playing them is for our four copies of Regilecki V Max a three prize Pokemon with 310 hit points, no retreat cost, and a terrific ability. So Transitor reads, all of your basic lightning Pokemon do 30 more damage to your opponent's active before applying weakness. They stack. If you get two in play, Maridon's doing 280. That's V-Star Pokemon. If you got three in play, that's Mew V-Max, which is a notable player in the post-rotation format. That is Gardevoir EX. That is quite a few of them, rather effortlessly, and you have three big bodies on the bench. Not even counting Choice Belts or Defiant Bands or anything else. So that's really, really good. Um, and then, of course, it has the attack 220, Max, Thunder, and Lightning. Um, it doesn't stack on itself because it's only basics, but that's okay. So it helps us attack with Maridon to hit significant numbers, and we just smash through. The deck has been a blast to play in testing. And for support, we play one copy of Mareep, one copy of the Dynamotor Flaffy, so we can get one Lightning Energy from our discard pile onto our bench Pokemon each turn. It helps us keep our Maridons going. It just helps keep streamlining attackers, so we just attack, 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 we win. Kind of feels like Rayquaza GX, kind of feels like Buzzwall GX. Like we're hitting some really fun cards and the, the play style on it is a ton of fun. So how do we search this Pokemon out? I mean, given that Maridon searches everything else. Well, we're playing four Ultra Ball. So discard two cards from your hand and search for any Pokemon. So it can discard things for Flaffy. It can search us our evolutions. It can search us the one Maridon to really get the ball rolling. And just for good measure, because Tandem Unit is good, but just in case, we play for Nest Ball. So search your deck for a basic Pokemon, uh, reveal it and put it onto your bench. 
again, I've played games where I have one nest ball in hand. Maridon gives me an Aleki and a Maridon. Then the second Maridon gives me a double Aleki. I can also just opt for two Alekis in the right matchup and go for the Marie. Like, my setup has never been a problem so long as I can find one of my 12 outs to a Maridon. It's terrific. And then, of course, we're going to keep the speed going because that's what this deck is built for. We're going to play four Electricity Generator. <laughs> so look at the top five cards of your deck. Choose up to two basic Lightning Energy cards and attach them to your benched Lightning Pokemon in any way you like. So we are playing a lot of Lightning Energy in this deck. Just to get that out of the way, we're just going to kind of clear out. We are playing 13 of them. In case you forget or I forget. We'll get it out of the way now. So we're playing 13 lightning energy. So we're playing over 20% of our deck as, you know, lightning energy. So we have pretty good odds to, to grab those. And with Maridon quickly ripping basics and ripping other cards out of the deck, it's not hard to get a turn one attack with the electricity generator. So you attach and then generators. It's very, very good um, to keep things going. We play two copies of EXP share, which in the current format, you don't really see. But it reads, when your active Pokemon is knocked out, which is okay, because we're trying to trade, take one of your basic energy and a Pokemon that this card is attached to. So we attach it to Maridon on the bench, we have a Maridon in the active, or we have two of these on the bench and a Maridon in the active still swinging. So we just keep our attackers rolling, we don't lose any momentum. Very, very good, and keep in mind the, there is a new tool change coming, so they're no longer classified as item cards. Um, any existing cards with the word item will still be classified as tools, and they will not be searchable via item card search. And then we play two copies of the new Defiant Band. So in case we didn't hit hard enough before, i.e. those Pokemon at 330, let's, let's just say Rapid Strike or Shifu for whatever reason. Uh, Defiant Band says if you are losing the game, so if you're behind on prizes, your attacks do 30 more damage before applying weakness. So we add a couple transitors, we add a Defiant Band, and Maridon can hit absurd numbers on its own, very powerful. Um, and of course, just to keep our movement going, we play two copies of Switch, just so we can uh, get things around. Let's say Maridon survives the turn. Let's say we just want to get something out of the way. Very, very good. Um, Switch is just kind of there. I am nervous about cards not playing Switch or Paralysis. Um, many decks loft for Drapion, so V-Star. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to get trapped in the active with no way out. And of course, we play one copy of Energy Recycler. So I opted for this rather than a 14th Energy. I've seen lists play 14, 15, whatever. Um, in the late game, I found myself sitting on a copy or two copies of Electricity Generator with 12 to 13 cards in deck. And I could very quickly burn through and bring that down to a reasonable number, like, you know, six or seven or eight. And then I'm sitting on a generator with nothing to do. The Recycler ideally lets us use the generators in the late game after we've lost a Maridon or two. Flaffy can only do so much. EXP Share can only do so much. The generators, like Max Elixir back in the day, are the main we way we are getting everything online and going. So you got to find a way to keep those active and just push through. And of course, we are playing four copies of the best supporter in the game. No hand, no questions, no hands, please. <laughs> Professor's Research. And this is the Turo edition for those Violet fans. So it says, discard your hand, draw seven. We're going fast. Research goes fast. What's not to like? So we're going to see cards we want. We're going to get energy we want. We're going to get Pokemon we want. We're just going to rip through the deck as quickly as possible. There's not really much more to say on that. And then we are playing three copies of the second best supporter in the game, Boss's Orders. Switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active. So if they put something in the active, we don't want to chase the small fish. We want the big fish. If you put something on the board, there's a reason we're ramping up our damage to very high numbers. We want the biggest thing on your board. We want to trade efficiently. We're not knocking out a one prizer unless, you know, it's, it's okay. If we see a guard of war, we want it. We want the Muse, we want the Tinas, we want the Lugias if they survive. We want the VMAXs, we want all of your big targets. So boss lets us do that. Two is usually the safe number because they have to attack with their main attacker. So usually one of them is in harm's way. And then two boss will get us the other two that we want. So 
three is for good measure. We play two copies of Zinnia's Resolve. So this one I actually had to go back and read to see what it did, because it's been a while. Discard two cards from your hand. Draw a card for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play. So that's not bad. A lot of the decks are turning to set up decks. So they're gonna wanna play three, four, five Pokemon. Not all of them are gonna throw up a Duraludon and solo you, right? Like, we're, we're not in those days. The Quad Blissies maybe, but like, Still, Zinni is pretty effective here. It pitches energy, it pitches wasted cards. It just lets us draw. Let's say we don't want to throw away an electricity generator. We can Zinnia rather than research if we have an okay board set up. But again, knowing when to hold them, when to fold them and throw them in is very key with this deck. And lastly, we are playing the new supporter, Arvin. So search your deck for an item card and a Pokemon tool card. So they are distinct now and put them into your hand. EXP share, electricity generator, probably the main things you're gonna be searching off these. There's no easy way of getting the generators without Arvin or naturally drawing into them. So I threw two in. Initially they were four seal stones and I was playing Raikou, but I just like the consistency here. I never had a problem setting up. I was always so much faster than everything I played against. Um, <laughs> the wheels have to almost fall off for this deck to fall apart. So it's very, very nice. And, la and lastly, we play three stadiums. They are all the same, very quick to cover. Beach Court. So Regilecki VMAX moves for free. Beach Court makes it so our Maridons and our Regilecki Vs also move for free. So the only thing in this deck that does not move for free at some point or another is Flappy, which we have switches for and it shouldn't be in harm's way anyway. So this is my list. This is what I've been play testing with. Keep an eye out as we're going to cover more of the lists that I've been working on, more of them we've been fine tuning and messing with. These are also skeleton lists, so feel free to tech them, tinker them as you see fit. I haven't factored in existing archetypes because nobody, like we know, we know they're proven commodities. We know what you're going to see with your Giratina Lost Boxes. We know what you're going to see with the Mew. Like they're not going to see much from this set. I wanted to take the time to showcase that. And I'd rather see how they fare against each other than how they fare against me right away. But we will eventually get there. So if you enjoyed the content and you stuck around till the end, thank you so much for everything, guys. You guys have been awesome. And until next time, take care.